So today I am talking to Dr. Dave Larson, who is at Life Wellness Institute, and I wanted to ask you about sleep. And yeah. the reason is, um, I know that you are kind of an expert on sleep, and um, well, let me just start with this. Why is it important in the scheme of health and wellness? Yeah, it's a big question. Um... So your brain is about, um, I don't know, two or three pounds, mm -hmm. and it consumes about 25% of all the energy your body makes. So it's like this Ferrari machine that's going on day in, day out, and just like any high horsepower engine, it makes a lot of waste. And there's a process that our body has for handling waste. Um, in the rest of the body, we have our lymphatic system which drains waste and brings it out to excrete it in urine, feces, bile. In the brain, there's no lymphatic system. So what happens in stage, uh, it's called N3, slow wave sleep. The space between your brain cells shrinks about 80%. Hmm. And instead of blood in our brain, there's something called cerebrospinal fluid. It's clear liquid full of nutrients, mm -hmm. but it also goes in between the cells, flushes out that debris, so that it can get taken out of your brain, so your brain's ready for a new day. If you don't get that, it's not just sleep, it's specifically deep sleep. If you don't get stage N3 sleep, those byproducts, that waste accumulates and starts to cause dysfunction. Wow. And the one people hear about is beta amyloid, mm -hmm. um, the protein thought to be related with Alzheimer's disease. We're making it right now as we're talking. Wow. So it's not a problem to make it, but it's a problem if we don't have our normal mechanism for getting rid of that waste. So it's mm -hmm. called the glymphatic system. And we only get rid of it in sleep? Yeah, not just sleep, but in deep sleep. yeah, stage N3 deep sleep. And how do you get some of that? <laughs> yeah, uh, your body knows how to get that totally naturally. Uh, the problem most people is they do things that block that. Okay. So... Um, Pretty much every prescription sleep aid will decrease uh, stage N3 sleep. Ambien, um, Sonata, Lunesta, Clonopin, Xanax, uh, Valium, Ativan, all those things will decrease it. Mm -hmm. um, Benadryl, Tylenol PM, Advil PM, those products decrease decrease it okay so we think that we're actually improving our sleep and we're decreasing the, the type that we need the most exactly so a lot of people have a belief you know that sleep is just sleep and you know what really matters is what types of sleep you're getting mm -hmm. and uh, that's by far the most restorative sleep when you feel and you wake up and you feel refreshed it's that n3 sleep do we get that from napping so a sleep cycle in an adult is about 90 minutes, and it usually goes stage one, two, three, and then REM. And REM is where our body's paralyzed, and we dream. And then it goes back to one. So uh, to really get there, you need at least an hour and a half nap. Okay. You tend to get it more in the first half of the night than the second half, and that's where alcohol becomes a problem. Because alcohol, you know, one drink takes about two hours to three hours longer for women mm -hmm. to metabolize and that'll interfere with deep sleep. So some people will have a drink in order to help fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Little do they know that that's affecting them in that precious first part of the night where they would normally get that N3 deep sleep. What do you do as a doctor, a psychiatrist, and a human being when you're laying in bed and you feel, oh, tomorrow is such a demanding day and I'm not able to sleep? I mean, um, how do you kind of quell your own fears about that? And what do you recommend that people Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful question. Um, so, do you remember Pavlov's dog? I do. Okay. So, what happened when they put this, you know, this random stimulus, the bell, mm -hmm. um, and they associate it with food? Pretty soon they get rid of the food, they just ring a bell, and... The dog salivates. Starts to drool. Right. So the trick to kind of consistent, good quality sleep is training your brain to make those associations. Oh, okay. So sleep happens on autopilot. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, and this is the most evidence-based way to get people to have a good quality sleep is called cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. Okay. 
Okay, so a big phase of that, it's called stimulus control. And it's about every moment our body and our mind is taking in information from our environment. So the places, the smells, the temperature, the everything. And so when our body is in bed, we only want to go to bed when we're feeling really tired and when we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything else in bed because then your brain is going to make an association. For example, a lot of people will be, they'll have their bed be a time where they watch their favorite show mm -hmm. or their bed will be a place they uh, check social media. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as their body hits their bed, just like Pavlov's dog, their brain goes, I'm excited about the show. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about social media or maybe the bed is the worrying place about the next day. Mm -hmm. So what I would tell you know myself or someone else is um, if that happens when I hit bed, get out of bed, ideally go to another room. Mm -hmm. If I'm worried about my day, kind of write down my worry list mm -hmm. or the, all the things knowing it's going to be there tomorrow. And I literally have to stay in that room doing boring things until I feel really tired and relaxed. Only then am I allowed to go to bed. You do not want to risk being in bed when you're feeling anything other than super relaxed or really sleepy. Okay. And I tell people if they end up, once they feel sleepy, then you can go to bed. If it takes more than 30 minutes to fall asleep, you need to get out of bed and go to another room and do boring stuff, even if you're up the whole night doing it. So all the things that work for sleep usually involve anywhere from a few days to a week, week and a half of suffering. Okay. Where you're going to be, the, you know, rule number one is ha wake up at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. Rule number two, don't go to bed unless you're sleepy. Okay. Um, number three, don't stay in bed unless you're asleep. And uh, gosh, I can't remember rule number, and number four is no naps. No naps. Okay. That's only for people with sleep problems. Is there anything that you think I should ask you or that people should know about sleep that we haven't talked about? Oh, that's a good question. That deep sleep um, protects the immune system. We know it's important for the brain functioning optimally, and we know the brain is kind of your central control center for your heart rate, your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight, and your parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest. Um, and there's a certain common sleep problem called sleep apnea mm -hmm. that we know causes high blood pressure in the lungs, which leads to heart failure and the need for a heart transplant if it's untreated. Wow. That's another kind of big takeaway. If people snore or gasp for air, mm -hmm. they should get a sleep study. Okay. Um, you want to make sure sleep apnea is diagnosed and treated if you have it. Uh, did you say that there's a test people can do at home? Mm -hmm. Did I hear that right? Yeah. So uh, if you ask your doctor for a home sleep study, uh -huh. that's one way to do it. I know ResMed is coming out with uh, something called the S Plus. That's a, a small bedside device uh, that measures your sleep. And then wristband accelerometers like the Fitbit, um, VivoSmart, uh, Garmin will kind of, and even the Apple Watch will indirectly measure that. Mm -hmm. It's not directly, the way to really directly measure it is um, EEG but they'll do it based on movement because you're paralyzed in REM sleep, mm -hmm. so you don't move during REM sleep, and based on how much your wrist is moving, they'll make a chart of the depth of your sleep. Mm -hmm. So that gives some data. Mm -hmm. You just have to keep in mind it's not the most accurate data. But for the most part, it, uh, easy um, everyday measurement is just do you feel good and rested when you wake up? Exactly. Okay. Do you wake up before your alarm? Okay, and is that something we're shooting for? Ideally, yeah, that's how you know. You are able to catch up on sleep debt. So if you haven't, if you don't have enough sleep, um, I learn this all the time in residency. <laughs> you know, there can be times where I'm only sleeping four or five hours, then on the weekend, sleep 18 hours. Not and you can, works. that does work. Your body can overcome a sleep debt. Um, and you know you're rested when, you know, you're waking up naturally. Your body, I guess that's another theme of our conversation is trusting your body. Mm -hmm. There's thousands of years of wisdom in there. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you so yeah. much for your expertise and your time. And I think this will be really helpful to people. So I hope great. so. It's fascinating. Get a good night's sleep.